there are a lot of Christmas traditions floating around out there. I suspect that those that we follow depend on who you grew up with, how religious you are, and or whether or not you have little kids. Some traditions follow you for your whole life, and some change as you get older. I haven't had a piece of fruitcake since I was forced by gunpoint into selling it for high school band, and thank goodness for that. Anywho, here are a few traditions that I enjoy during the holiday season. We had all sorts of Christmas trees when I was growing up. Some of them were real, while some of them weren't. Some of them were green, and some of them weren't. We had an aluminum tree with that multicolored lamp that goes in circles to make the tree change colors. Remember when that was a thing? But why do we put up Christmas trees? Do we think it's fun? My mother always thought the fun part was taking it down. It was a symbol of turning the page, I guess. Decorated Christmas trees date back to the Middle Ages in Germany. Martin Luther is said to have been the first to have added lights in the form of candles to the tree. Modern trees are also related to the Tree of Paradise in medieval mystery plays held on December the 24th. This day celebrates Adam and Eve in various countries and is often decorated with apples depicting the fruit from the Tree of Knowledge. There is no evidence that the Christmas tree descends from a pagan ritual as is reported in some sites. In the United States, the first Christmas tree lot was opened in 1851. By 2019, 77% of American households had a Christmas tree in their home, 81% of them being artificial. No data on how many homes still have an aluminum tree with a color roto lamp. Christmas just wouldn't be the same without Christmas movies. A few I try to never miss are A Christmas Story, whose tagline, You'll Shoot Your Eye Out, makes that movie pop right into your head. If you've seen the movie, you know that Ralphie ends up getting his Red Ryder BB gun and almost does shoot his eye out. Ralphie's house is located in Cleveland, Ohio, and was sold on eBay in 2004 to a person who restored the house converting it to the Christmas Story House Museum. You can visit the Christmas Story House Museum in Cleveland and even spend a night at the house as the third floor was converted into a suite. Good luck getting a reservation. The scene where Santa pushes Ralphie down the slide was filmed in Cleveland at Higby's Department Store. The store kept the slide after the movie wrapped. Higby's morphed into a Dillard's in 1992 and closed in 2002. It's now Jack Cleveland Casino. Some of the scenes were filmed in Canada, two of which were Ralphie's school and the flat tire scene on the road where Ralphie drops the F-bomb. The original choice to play the dad in the movie was Jack Nicholson, but the role ended up going to Darren McGavin. I don't know, would you be envisioning Nicholson yelling, Here's Johnny, at poor Ralphie? Nightmare Before Christmas is a great flick, and it can do double duty as a Christmas movie and a Halloween movie. And who wants to miss a Charlie Brown Christmas, where all you have to do is give that emaciated tree a little love? Too bad the networks didn't feel the need to give the viewers a little love. A longtime ABC staple, the only way you can see it is to pay for Apple TV. Bah humbug. I didn't grow up with Elf on the Shelf, since they didn't come around until 2005. The first time I ever saw one, I worked at Hallmark, and to tell you the truth, I thought that thing would never sell. Boy, was I wrong. Your elf is supposed to go to the North Pole every night and return every day until Christmas to rat on your kid. They are at a new spot each day when they return, making your kid believe that they have been gone during the night. Every Christmas, Jimmy Kimmel does Elf on the Shelf skits, which are pretty funny. As for me, I'm glad I missed this one when I was growing up. This seems a little creepy, a lot like the Twilight Zone episode Living Doll, where the doll Talkie Tina 
terrorizes Telly Savalas. But hey, you do you. I've watched The Nutcracker every year on TV, and I've seen a few live performances. It's something that is part of the Christmas season for me. The Nutcracker premiered in 1892 in St. Petersburg, Russia, and finally made it to the United States in 1944. The first performance was by the San Francisco Ballet. I've always left cookies and milk for Dad, uh, I mean Santa, when I was a kid. To be honest, I don't really know if that was happening in the houses of my friends. I never asked. Apparently, there are some theories for this tradition. During the Feast of St. Nicholas on December the 6th, children would leave food for the saint and his attendants. The food and drinks would be exchanged for presents. This tradition is also linked to Norse mythology, where hay and treats would be left for Odin's horse, hoping the gods would stop by their home when he was hunting. I did it because I thought it was fun. I'm not sure when my dad figured out that I knew Santa wasn't eating those cookies. I have a door wreath on my door. So does my neighbor, as well as my sister. I just like how they look. I also hang one for fall. The evergreen Christmas wreath specifically has a Christian meaning with the circular shape representing eternal life and the holly and leaves representing Christ's crown of thorns and his blood. These days, they are mostly seen as a secular Christmas tradition. Ever wonder whose idea it was to string Christmas lights on a tree? Hint, who invented the light bulb? No, it wasn't Thomas Edison's idea to string those lights, but his friend, Edward Hibbard Johnson, who came up with the idea in New York in 1882. I guess that's less of a fire hazard than Martin Luther's candles on a tree, so good on him. By 1914, these lights were being mass-produced. No word on who suggested that one's dad should risk breaking his neck by hanging them on the roof of the house, or break his wallet by hiring someone else to do it. I love Christmas cards. I especially like those Hallmark cards that fold out and play music the expensive ones. A lot of people don't quite get my attachment to cards. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine told me to stop sending her those $13 Christmas cards and to give to Meals on Wheels instead, a charity that she works for. Okay, so that's what I did. I still send her Christmas cards, only cheaper ones. She hasn't said anything, so she either feels better about the price or she's just given up on me. No matter what you might think, Hallmark didn't invent the Christmas card to make a ton of money from people like me who buy $13 cards. The first Christmas card actually appeared in England in 1843 with a very simple message, A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. Hallmark finally got into the act in 1915, and the Hall brothers created a folded Christmas card in an envelope. I'm pretty sure it didn't cost 13 bucks. I buy poinsettias every year. They are pretty, and they are one of the few plants that I can't kill. I also don't have a pet that my poinsettias can kill. Actually, poinsettias get a bad rap for this. The plant is toxic to pets, as it can make them puke, but it rarely kills them. Still, is it worth making Fido suffer? I think not. Poinsettias are actually native to Central America and were first introduced to the States by United States Ambassador to Mexico botanist Joel Poinsett in the 1820s. The plants were donated to TV shows by California horticulturalist Paul Ecke. By 1986, it was the highest selling potted plant in America. These are some of my Christmas traditions. What are some of yours? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, Subscribe and ring that notification bell to wish me a Merry Christmas.